So while the body work is set aside to cure for a couple of days, in the meantime, I focused my attention to the engine. And that was quite a bit more work than I figured it would be, to be fully honest. But nonetheless, it was a fun build. I took a lot of time to finish all of the parts off properly. First started off by cutting them out of the sprues and cleaning them up a little bit here and there. And some of these could also be glued together as they needed to be the same color anyway and were part of the same assembly. So mainly the engine block and all the parts surrounding it could simply just be glued together in order to make it a lot easier for painting as you now need to paint one part and not do five or six separate ones. With the prep work now completed and also the first part of the assembly done, I could move them all into the spray booth to apply a couple light coats of primer before I started applying various different shades of silver, titanium, some gold and even black. In the original kit there were a couple of pieces that were chrome plated. I didn't really like the look and some of them also needed to be glued together and that would leave a really ugly seam. So I stripped off that chrome plating with a uh, stripper. In this case I just used Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner that just strips it off really easily in a matter of seconds. Then of course all of the parts were sanded, primed and now painted gloss black. I will leave these to cure overnight before I start applying this sort of chrome finish on top of it later. So originally I also painted the calipers in the same gold as some of the other parts for the suspension but didn't really like the look of it as it would be a bit too modern for this car in my opinion so I just went over it with a couple coats of yellow. A lot of the parts in this engine slash chassis assembly needed to be painted in multiple colors and I wanted to do it right but also make it a lot easier for myself. So I first applied the color that was easiest to mask off and then later applied the second color. So the base part on the bottom half was painted white and then the top section in flat black. Same goes for these valve covers. They were painted silver first and then masked to paint that second part in a flat black. And in the meantime, the parts for the exhaust and some other pieces that were painted in the gloss black had dried overnight. And I started applying some mist coats of a chrome finish on top of it just to give it a bit more of a realistic metal look. Once that was all said and done, I could move on to unmasking a lot of the parts and revealing the final paint job for some of them and then masking others up for a second or maybe even third time to finalize the airbrush work. The metal paint finishes from Alclad can be a little bit of a fragile finish and I didn't really want to smudge all the paint on the exhaust which will be pretty highly visible at the end. So I decided just to coat over it with Aqua Gloss. That is the specific clear coat supplied for these metal paints just to protect it and it doesn't really take away all the sheen of that metal too much and just gives you the look that you're after with a bit of protection on top.
So even though some of the parts were painted two or maybe even three times, that of course is not enough. A lot of these parts are in a metal silver finish. I did apply various different shades of silver, some titanium and other parts as well, but that really didn't complete the look and some pieces just looked like the exact same part even though they were meant to look like separate pieces. So I added a little bit of a paneline wash from Tamiya. This is just their black paneline accent color and it tones down a couple of the parts just to make them stand out a little bit more, give them a bit of extra shade or just a different tone of finish on the overall piece. When looking at some photos online for reference on the engine bay, I found various different pieces going either in a silver finish, and then on the next one they were in a carbon fiber finish, and then on the next one they were silver or black or carbon fiber again. So I didn't really know which was which, but I decided just to find a simple medium, and that is to do whatever I want and just uh, pile it together with some pieces that I wanted to have in carbon fiber and the others just to be left in the metal finish to not overdo it. So the air intake, I believe, was on a lot of these photos in a black or carbon fiber finish, and for that I used the split carbon fiber decals from SK Decals. I've never used these decals before, but they have supplied me with some to use on some builds. I was excited to use these as you don't have to match them up in the middle as they simply already have that split pattern in there. So as usual, I made some quick templates with a bit of masking tape and some markers, cut those out of the decal sheet and started applying them. The application process for these decals is pretty much the same as with any other. They apply really well and conform to shape super easily with a bit of decal setting and softening solutions and a bit of heat. So now that we have most of the painting and detailing out of the way, the main assembly could start. And that was also a pretty big task as there were a fair amount of parts that needed to be fit together pretty precisely. Specifically, all of these sort of skeleton framing around it needed a bit more attention and also a bit of love just to have them in the exact right spot and fit up with the other frame pieces to go onto. In the kit itself, there is a decal sheet with various logos to go onto the engine and other pieces to come later. But luckily, Aoshima also supplied me with the additional photo edge sheet, which came with a small decal or actual metal sticker sheet to replace a lot of those decals and just make it a lot more realistic. So these were put onto the engine to finish those details off as well. With all of these pieces already being painted, I needed to glue them together and for that I'm simply just using some super glue, in this case either a Maxi Cure or Super Gold Plus from Bob Smith Industries. You could of course also use plastic cement or uh, some plastic weld or stuff like that, but in that case you will need to remove the paint from the areas that are going to be glued together, so be aware of that. In the photo edge sheet, you also get a couple pieces of mesh, which will be replacing the ones that come in the kit that are simply just made out of plastic and not see-through. And also the exhaust tips were replaced with actual metal ones just to make it even more realistic. On the edges of the exhaust tip, there is also an additional sticker. This again is one of those metal stickers that has a couple of small uh, final details in there as well to finish these parts off too. 
I could then move on to installing the exhaust itself on the top of the transmission. However, I decided to follow the instructions and that wasn't really the best idea. I put these side pieces on first and then the main muffler. And of course, they were completely out of whack and didn't line up whatsoever. So I decided just to remove them and glue them back in place once the main muffler and exhaust tip piece was put on and then align them a lot easier. The final assembly was pretty simple, however, it wasn't really as easy as it probably could have been. Some of these pieces need to be pressed together pretty hard as there wasn't really all that much tolerance between them. So a bit of pressure was applied and also a bit of twisting and turning before they wanted to snap in place. They have some directional pins in there so they can only be assembled in one specific way, but not all of them line up after you've assembled various sub-assemblies already. So be aware of that and be very, very cautious of assembling all of this and be sure to have them in the right place. Once most of that was completed, I could move on to some more of these skeletons or skeleton pieces for the frame to hold it all together. Again, a bit of a fiddly job too, as they need to be aligned pretty precisely and that took a bit of time and also you couldn't really do all of it beforehand as some of the other pieces going on top of them will determine where they need to be exactly. To finish it all off, I still need to glue on the disc brakes from the actual photo etch set. So that is why I painted it black for the center piece of this disc to remain black and being detailed with the silver bolts on it. And then finish it off with the actual metal piece for the disc itself. These were sanded lightly with a coarse grit sandpaper just to give it a bit more of a realistic look and not be as smooth and shiny as it is straight out of the packaging of course. And then finally, it was time to add a bit of a wash to some of these areas that needed a lower lighting or simply just have some black in it just to give it a bit more realism like the exhaust tips themselves and also the disc brakes just to give those uh, drilled pieces a bit more of a realistic look and not look exactly the same as the rest of the disc. Overall, I'm really happy with the way that this piece of the build came out. It looks phenomenal, has a lot of details in it, and it really pops with all of those different shades of silver and also the gold that the Paganis are known for, and finalizing it with a bit of carbon fiber to complete the look, of course. It was a heck of a lot of work, and it took about a week from start to finish to do all of this as it properly should. So the next piece on the front will probably be taking a bit of time too, but in the meantime, I will be moving on to the interior first. <laughs> 